My first run was 10,000 shillings. Out of 200, I got a profit of 700. Hundreds of thousands of members save and take loans with Jami Bora today all over Kenya. And the organization is growing day by day. But Jami Bora is so much more. The number of services provided by Jami Bora speak of a microfinance organization for the local population powered by local members with a focus on services based on providing adequate tools for members to make their climb out of poverty better prepared than ever before. The life here is changing drastically. The I am what I am because of Jamibora. The membership is growing day in, day out. You can tell people didn't know how to save their money. When you become a member of Jamibora, you get access to a ladder. And that ladder you can use to climb out of poverty. We provide with you with a ladder, we say, but the climbing, my friend, you have to do yourself. And the ladder consists of a whole series of services that they get access to by being Jamibora members. They can save with us, they can take loans with us and start little businesses and climb into bigger businesses as they go along. They can borrow for anything that helps them climb out of poverty. Do their loans. I'm able to keep my business on. My plan is to have my own workshop, to have my own machines, and start my business and employ other people to be helping me. If I need something, I just go to the office. If it is school fees, my daughter is doing well. She's in that year, and she's she's like a like a somebody else who is who has been working or who has come from a developed family. Jami Bora was founded in 1999 and has grown from the original 50 street beggars to a full-fledged nationwide organization with banking status. The basic principles still remain the same. Jami Bora provides savings and loans to the vast majority of Kenyans who have no access to the financial sector today. <laughs> It's not all easy to train people how to get hound outs. So it was for us to train them not to beg all the time. Lakin Ria Nitarud Nubag Nikitokea, Nikakaya Mzuri Nawatoyan Viet. We also do the business plan for them, we assist them and we give them guidelines and because Jamibora have given us that knowledge and they have educated us how to go about it so that we don't lose our members. We have our own business school and we train um, our members in business, how to manage businesses. And right now we're actually being recognized around the world and we have an official collaboration with the University of North Carolina in the U.S. with uh, the, B, the largest business school in Europe called BI and with African Nazarene University in Kenya. On that particular loan, this includes the loan, the loan product. We are unique also because our staff are all recruited from the membership. These are talented members who have been desperately poor, even some of them have been beggars from the beginning. And through our own business school and our on-the-job training, they become first a, a loans officer, then maybe a branch manager, then maybe a national manager. They come up. So for instance, Janet Bitt was one of the first 50 beggars. She's now a member of our senior management team, and she's the head of our Tumaini department. Mm. My work as a social worker, I go around the streets to look for street beggars to try to tell them they can do. If I was a beggar myself and I came out of it, that they can be able also to come out of poverty and become successful. Priscilla, eh? It's like a movement of our own. This is a movement of the poor. 
And at the end of the day, everyone will be able to get at least something. At times, I do say, if we could have more than 10 microfinances like Yamibora, we could reach. No one could be poor in 10 years to come. Now, we also found that some families are not climbing out of poverty because there's an alcoholic in the family. And that alcoholic is pulling the others back. Uh, whatever they earn, the alcoholic is stealing. And so we decided we needed our own sobriety movement. And we have trained over 300 councillors from among our members. And we have Levuka clubs all over. Rehabilitation of alcoholics and drug addicts is a very, very expensive venture in Kenya. Uh, because we don't have many rehabilitation centers uh, for alcoholics and drug addicts. At the same time, alcoholism is also uh, not very well understood. We have had several cases. Like now we had a case within this place that we are, we are in Gedongori, whereby a student engaged himself into drugs. He could not manage to stay in the school. He used to sneak out. And Yamibora chipped in to assist the parent because he could not manage to cater for the, that program of counseling and all that. Uh, once somebody stops drinking, we encourage them as much as possible to join uh, Jamibora. They form their own small groups of uh, five each to make sure that the money that was being used in a bad way is now put into very good use, whereby they save the money uh, in Jamibora. They can now access small loans and they can become useful members of the society. The health insurance we started because we saw that some members could not afford to pay their loans. And when we visited all of those members, we found that 93% had the same problem. They had a patient, a family member, a close family member, a child or a spouse or a sister or a brother who had to be admitted in hospital. And then all the family's money went to that. We allow them to pay a few cents every week and they are covered, fully covered, even if they have just paid for two weeks. Many members were dying with the loans and it was very hard for us to ask the group members to pay the loans back. So we decided to start a program called Life Insurance where when you take a loan, you have to pay 1% of your loan. With this 1%, in case you die or you become permanent disability, the life insurance will pay the loan off, and then your next of kin will, pay, will be paid twice your savings. Two years ago, we started a disaster insurance because we found that at this point, the few that were defaulting in their loans had been exposed to some kind of disaster, either a fire in the slum, wiped out a lot of little shacks and their businesses, or a landslide or a flood, or even city and government authorities who pull down their business because they've set it up on the roadside and they're not allowed to be there. We accept that as a disaster and we pay out the disaster insurance. After the election at the end of 2007, hell broke out in this country. My properties, they destroyed my house, they take away everything in my house. People started fighting each other, beating each other, stealing, burning down businesses and properties. And in Jamibora, almost 80,000 members, half of our membership, lost everything. 